Today, we're with the new Honda Civic Type R. And if you're worried that the Civic Type R might go soft in its old age, or that Honda might want to change the recipe because its future product line is crammed full of electric vehicles, then you've got nothing to worry about because this will be quicker in a straight line. It has more power, it has more torque, it will be quicker around a circuit. And yet, it remains front wheel drive, it has a manual gearbox, and it's powered by VTEC. Probably the best thing to do is start with the looks. And FYI, there are going to be a lot of references here to the previous generation Type R, the FK8. So if you haven't seen a video review of one of those, you should go away and watch one now. Happily, we've got two. So go away, watch one of those, and then come back. Now, unmistakably, this is a Honda Civic Type R. You've got a red Honda badge. That's been a trademark of every Civic Type R since the EK9 rocked up in 1997. That was the first Type R. You've also got flared wheel arches, you've got red brake calipers, you've got low profile tires, you've got some trick aero work that definitely doesn't feature on a standard Civic, a rear wing. You've got a new wheel design. These are 19 inch wheels rather than 20 inch wheels. And that's quite interesting really because the previous gen FK8, every version of that apart from the sport line had 20 inch wheels. So yeah, interesting decision that Honda's gone from 20 to 19s. Spoke design is quite similar. It's still a matte black color, but the real difference is here on the edge of the wheel because the old one had a big old step in it, it went in and down towards the center. Here, it's a lot flatter. But aggressive though it is compared to the standard 11th gen Civic, it is nowhere near as jacked as the FK8 was. The wheel arches on that were way more flared, the bonnet scoop more prominent. And yes, this does still have a three exit exhaust, a big rear diffuser, but would you just look at that rear wing? It's black rather than body colored. It's so much thinner, it's got aluminium support. It's no way near as in your face as the wing on the FK or even the FK2. And up here, yes, you've still got a little shark fin in the middle, but on the FK8, you also had two smaller fins on either side. And at the edge of the roof, you had little extensions that came off down here, all for aerodynamics. On this, it's all gone. Is it prettier? Well, that's a topic for discussion. It's simpler, certainly, which will appeal to plenty of people. But in profile, it looks more like an Accord than a Civic than ever before. Honda has moved the windscreen and the A-pillar back for the new Civic, so the bonnet now looks longer. Too long, perhaps? Regardless, there's evidence that Honda is taking the aerodynamics seriously. The diffuser is better integrated with the floor. There are vents behind the front wheels that pull air out of the wheel arches. Sadly, the ones behind the rear wheels, those little bits of plastic trim, are fake. There are sill extensions as there were on the FK8 too. Honda has said the FL5 produces more downforce than the FK8, but so far, not how much more. Anyway, enough about the exterior, let's have a look at the interior. And first of all, wow is it red in here? Look at it! Ooh. Previous Type R's have had red touches, that's the Honda colour. But in here, the carpets are all red rather than red and black. The seats are all red rather than red and black. You've got red seat belts, which is just an absolute classic. And Honda says that this colour of red is actually more vivid. Yeah, it is. Interestingly, the steering wheel is now grey Alcantara. Whereas on the facelift FK8, it was gray and red Alcantara. And on the pre-facelift FK8, it was red and black leather. That, everyone, is how you know you're a Type R nerd. Overall, it's 11th gen Civic in here. So the dash, the dials, the infotainment system, the display, it's all new. Also new, the polished aluminium center console, which was plastic in the FK8. The serial plate, meanwhile, a Type R trademark since the EK9, has moved from said console to the dashboard. There's a teardrop-shaped lever for the six-speed manual, a feature that brings us much joy, especially considering the fact that every other standard Civic in Europe is automatic only. And next to the gear lever is a switch to adjust the drive modes. Here, there's a key development. The FK2 and the FK8, they both had a switch that could adjust 
the drive mode. So you'd go through comfort, then sport, then plus R mode. In the FL5, for the first time, there's an individual mode. So you can have the sharper throttle response of plus R mode, you can have the heavier steering, but you can wind back the dampers. That, in the UK, is absolute gold. You can also turn off the automatic rev feature, you can also turn off the augmented sound. Honda brought that in for the facelift FK8, and it added more noise, but it wasn't a particularly nice noise in my book, so to be able to turn that off, it's great really. Anyway, it's far too red up here. So, through the magic of editing, let's go to the back. See? It's a bit more chilled out back here. Yes, you've still got the red seat belts, you've still got red carpets, you've still got red stitching on the seats, but it's less in your face. Things to note, well, you've now got Type R written on the back of the seats in front, in case you forget what car you're in. And also, you've got two cup holders, so if you're feeling like you're lacking redness in the back here, you can bring along a nice red Honda mug. Look at that, it fits as well. Delightful. What else do you need to know? Well, the full technical details haven't been released just yet, but there's still plenty to consider. Those 19-inch wheels are shod with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres, the same as the previous Civic Type R Sport line, but they measure 26530. The previous car had 24530 tyres. So, they're a little wider and there's a little bit more sidewall. The brakes, meanwhile, are the same two-piece Brembo units as before up front, solid discs at the rear. There's dual-axis strut suspension at the front and a multi-link rear as before too, but the new car should be more resistant to torques here. The steering remains an electric dual pinion system. One key detail is that there's more structural adhesive in the chassis, which means greater rigidity. Again, exactly how much more rigidity, we don't know yet. The tailgate is 20% lighter as well, and an aluminium bonnet saves weight also. Overall, the weight should be roughly the same as before. Now, the big one. The bit we've all been waiting for. It is the engine. It remains a two litre turbocharged four-cylinder VTEC engine. There's no mild hybrid or hybrid gubbins in here. So in that respect, it's quite similar to the engine of the FK2 and the FK8. But Honda hasn't left it alone. So far we know there's a more efficient manifold, a lighter crankshaft, and generally a more efficient turbo with less inertia thanks to a different number of turbo blades, a different blade shape, and a different housing. The exhaust has been revised too, so there should be more noise, and the cooling system has been upgraded as well. Power and torque? Honda hasn't given us the numbers yet, but the old car had 320 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 400 Nm from 2,500 to 4,500 RPM. Breaking that down a bit, from the FK2 to FK8, power went from 155 horsepower per litre to 160 horsepower per litre, so 10 horsepower overall. Honda has said the FL5 will sit above the FK8, so a jump from 160 horsepower to 165 horsepower per litre, or another 10 PS overall, would be entirely reasonable. So, 330 horsepower. As for torque, well happily, I have this bit of paper. This is some of the information I've been given from Honda, and on it is a little chart, which on the left here says torque, and between 400 and 450 newton meters is a little star for the FL5. So what do you reckon? 425 newton meters of torque? Doesn't sound beyond reason, does it? Overall then, 330 horsepower, 425 newton meters of torque, there, thereabouts. They're quite sensible numbers to me. Yes, they're not massive gains, but that's not really what the Type R is about. You know that Honda will have pushed the FL5 along as far as it can within reason, and ultimately they want it to be faster than the FK8, but they want it to be the fastest front-wheel drive hot hatchback. So, we'll get all the details soon enough, but for now, what do you think of the FL5? Do you think it's a worthy successor to the FK8? Do you love the more subtle looks? Or do you prefer the old car? Or do you rather just go bonkers and put a 300 horsepower naturally aspirated VTEC engine up front? A proper old school VTEC screamer. Let us know in the comments below.